What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Soup. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Oop. Sam Claiborne, Taco Wednesday, and Brian Altano. <laughs> we actually did Taco Monday this week in yeah. the Hadfield house. We did too. You did? Yeah. That's why. I'd That's illegal. <laughs> it's called dumping. We always use. <laughs> and it's illegal. Taco Monday sounds way more like legal than Taco Wednesday. That just seems like you're legal. playing catch up. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we signed some paperwork ahead of this, and <laughs> you made sure you cleared, cleared it. You cl- got it cleared. Cleared it with IG and yeah. legal. <laughs> uh, we've got a great show for this week. It is what we call a slow news week. <laughs> Here at IGN. And but yes, when, last week was so fast that that's okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is okay. Uh, on Slow Newsweeks, that's when we we lean on you, the dear listener, to carry the burden of what we should talk about. And that's why we're going to lean on listener mail. How can people get in touch with us if they want to? Justin, that's a great question. If you were ever wondering how to reach us, you can always email us at the address gamescoop at IGN.com. Just like Michael Charbonneau did Ooh. from Bar, Vermont. Good name. Good town. Is that with one R? Two R's. Two R's? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So, B-A-R-R-E. So like, not like a, dr- a bar you barre. can barre. I'm guessing <laughs> that's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> Michael says, I'm a longtime listener. I've written several times for a 20 questions game suggestion. Today I'm writing with a general question for the whole group. With open world video game map size consistently getting larger, mm-hmm. I've started to notice that it's also getting much harder to memorize key areas of yeah. the map. I love open world games, and I always enjoy getting to know a majority of the map like the back of my hand. With games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it seems near impossible to get comfortable with any one area because they're all so large and sometimes rarely revisited. Some game developers have a perfect balance with a large open map that is designed in a way that makes it easier to get familiar with, like GTA V. So my question is, do you guys prefer a map to be the larger the better, or something smaller where you know every nook and cranny? Mm. Thanks, guys, for all that you do. It's a good question. It's true about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm before still playing we, that. Before we answer that question, remember, you can have your family also submit 20 questions, questions to try to stump us. That's a family we, challenge. We finally beat one family last yeah. week. Brian, uh, a trio of siblings each sent in a different uh, video game 20 questions suggestion to us. We lost the first two. We really? lost the first two, but they beat the third one. <laughs> we defeated them in the end, which is yeah. the important good. part. Yeah, it's always good to I beat siblings. I think that's siblings. how it works. You win one battle out of three, you win the war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure that's so this is a great question. I really yeah, it like is. It. Yeah, I, I definitely prefer a smaller map these days. I think that like there there is a sweet spot, and I think we reached this precipice and then jumped past it where things got a little too big. I feel like Horizon was a little too big. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that like something like Far Cry was Far Cry New Dawn was like you know which was a reskin of uh, Hope County in Far, Far Cry, Cry 5. Five. Yeah, um, that's a good way to get used to a map is to mm-hmm. play it in two video <laughs> games back to back. Did it feel familiar? Yeah. Oh yeah, it yeah. Definitely feels yeah. Like- yeah. Damon and I were talking about that. There's yeah. multiple times where we're like, what a cool area. Do, oh, yeah, I've been here already. I, I don't know this for sure, but it feels like maybe they took that map, same map, and kind of went like this a little bit. And it for your listeners, feel it feels like they shrank it inward just a little bit. Cause yeah. It doesn't feel like it takes trim the as it doesn't feel like it takes as long to like walk across. Yeah. It could have also just increased your speed. Movement maybe, speed, maybe. Mm-hmm. maybe like that's that. what it's a little bit. Uh, it's always interesting talking about the size of a video game map because it's really informed by how you're getting around. Right? Like, are you zipping around in a jet or just doing crazy stuff like Far Cry? Or I think someone uh, calculated that in GTA you're actually running on foot at like 20 miles an hour, just something <laughs> insane like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and just cause there's plenty of vehicles yeah. you jump in, but in an Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. It's going to take you, what, 20 minutes if you were to actually go all the way Right. Same with something like Red Dead, right? Um, Which is a massive game that you also move very slowly in, and uh, fast travel is basically knocked down to just a few key points, and it only works one way. So So, so I think, yeah, more so than just pure square miles, it's time to cross the map, and whether there's, like, very, like, the Far Cry 5 map I think is boring. Like, I don't think Hope County is very interesting compared to something like... What if there was... More flowers. We just <laughs> please just put more more of them in mm-hmm. there. Compared to like GTA Five, where it's like you know you're palling around in the desert. Now you're in downtown. Right. Now you're up in the suburb, and like it feels more distinct and um, interesting. Like if you go around the next corner, I feel like you. Well, you, you guys feel like you've memorized the Ocarina of Time map, right? Oh, I mean, no. I I thought we did, but that's then what you, I was going to bring up. <laughs> yeah, you pulled it up in the office, and I was like, oh, I know how to get to Cacarico mm-hmm. Village, and it was just up and over here. And you're like, no, it's not. It's actually over <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, like, and I, everybody kind of gets gather it around and look at the mini map which is like not detailed enough yep. to kind of show you where it just shows you where little exit are and like it doesn't show you the features no words and we we're looking at it and everybody's like it's right here I was like no it's down here guys I thought you were playing like, some like I've mirror played this mode like six times this week like it's down here and then everybody's like but I also thought it was mirrored yeah because we played a mirrored version of that game mm. I just thought that was interesting and like when you're out in the field though like if you just turn and look 
that's my favorite part about that game and what it kind of set precedent <coughs> for is features mm -hmm. and, and their distance features. So you can always see Death Mountain. Like yeah. you can be in, uh, you know, Lake Hylia and see Death Mountain and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's just you can always orient yourself that way. And if you grow up uh, – like I did in a place with mountains, it's actually really helpful. Like when you're in, when you're a kid and just like learning a town, like a giant grid, like where I was in Phoenix, like there's like mountains. There's a Camelback Mountain right in the middle of it. There's the, the McDowell Mountains at the other end. I could always tell where I was. That's and that's really why when I'm in Kansas, I'm like, <clears throat> I have no idea where I am sometimes. Don't know what direction. <laughs> Is, is things that, are, is that's that totally that? true because there aren't a lot of open world games that have that mm -hmm. sort of key, very tall, striking yeah. geographical location yeah. that sort of locates you. I think it was intentional. That's like, I think why. It's that was like thought that's out. why I'll say it. Breath of the Wild is another game where you can always kind of orient yourself yeah. and know where you are. I got to play that game. <laughs> I recommend it. Um, I think it might be a Sam game. 10 out of 10, IGN. I actually have a horrible sense of direction in real life. I never know. I get lost all the time. Eat mountains. Know. Yeah, and like that extends into video games. Like if a game doesn't have a really good, like robust mini map system or mapping system or navigation system, it legit impacts my ability to like enjoy mm -hmm. that game. Yeah, like I'm I, the same way. I got what, this is a deep cut, but uh, the game where you play as a bad guy, uh, Overlord, I think, where you have these little minions. Liked Overlord, mm -hmm. but that game had no map, and it's mm -hmm. sort of this you know twisty turny game world, and I got lost in it, and I'm like, I had to stop playing the game. I'm like, I'm getting really frustrated. Right. Um, I, I always had a really poor sense of direction in real life until I moved to Chicago yeah. and lived near a large body of water. Mm. I feel like when I live near a large body yeah. of water, I can always orient myself. That's right. why San Francisco, being on a peninsula, you're surrounded by water on three sides. It's actually very easy for me in this city to orient my head and like mm -hmm. understand where I am. Sutro Tower helps, too. Mm. I always have that thing that happens when I move to a new city or on vacation in a new city where uh, I will walk around all day and all of a sudden realize I'm not exactly oriented where I thought I was. I love that feeling. Yeah, it's like uh, when you wake up, you get like you get into a bunch of crimes in a GTA game and you wake up and the camera pans around and you're like, where am I? So oh, I'm outside of the hospital. Man, I really blacked <laughs> out last night. Even you've been by it <laughs> yeah. so many times. Um, I mentioned no, That means you got uh, killed in GTA yeah. <laughs> and you woke up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like in real life. Um, I mentioned Horizon. Uh, that's a huge game, but it's also, I think it does a really good job of having a really interesting, diverse landscape because there's like, there's like a jungle area and a fire area, and it feels exactly. like like adult Super Mario World or something like that. <laughs> like it's really cool in that regard. I also think to uh, Michael's other point, just about smaller game worlds. Like that's what I loved so much about Bully. Just like mm. a much much smaller space, it hardly even constitute as like an open world, but like a very very detailed, densely packed small space. And that's what I really love about the Yakuza games, which I think came up on GameScoop a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I love those games for a lot of reasons, just the quirky humor and the brawler combat. But what I really love about it is almost every game revisits this same neighborhood. And you get to see it change and evolve over time and go into the shops and see some of the same people. And it's like, I don't know, it's like six blocks. Like, that's it. But, like, they're split up into these distinct districts, and it feels like a real place. Mark Ryan, uh, a longtime employee of IGN here, was on the guides team a long time ago, used to always say that if, there, if games had fast travel in them, then, uh, then that is defeating the purpose of having an open world. Mm. He said, well, I'd like, like to see him try to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Well, right. games have gotten, uh, that's 10 years ago. Yeah. So games have gotten a lot bigger <clears> since <throat> then. But still, like his point was like, if you're going to make a world open, then like make traversing it so fun that you know you're gonna want to do that every time, and you're not gonna want to like skip past it and get well, into the game. Well, it's a tough balance because you're you're sort of you're taking these quality of life things, right? Like the new Far Cry game, right? Damon and I both played a ton of it. Um, Damon reviewed it. Uh, I put like twenty something hours in. I finished it. You can unlock helicopters in it, but you can also fast travel to pretty much anywhere on the map mm -hmm. um, and airdrop into those areas. So oh, it so basically, helicopter? it negates helicopters. Well, helicopters have machine guns and missiles. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, what are you going <laughs> to use them for? You know, because there aren't you really... You fly up to an outpost and just start blasting. That's fun. Away. That's fun to it's do. It's for, like, the toy version. But, yeah, like, if you're yeah. actually going to, like, beat something, yeah. you're going to want to do the airdrop. Yeah. Shadow of the Colossus was, I think, probably his example at the time. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. And I really like that. Like, the purpose of the open world in that game is to kind of solve the puzzle of where the, the Colossus is, but also just to look beautiful. And Red Dead did that this year. Um, that's not enough for a lot of people, but it is for me. And I actually really, really like uh, kind of chilling out and, and kind of panning the camera mm -hmm. around and like being admiring a game. Yeah. Like, there's just a type of game that I like to play that way.
And I, I can totally see people in the office being like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to go across this map again. Yeah. They're just, there's just different people that, that mm. feel right. you know, differently about maps. Games, some games do a lot better job of contextualizing your fast travel, like, oh, you're taking the subway or whatever, like yeah. uh, like Spider-Man, for example, where it was Assassin's Creed goes you're hard just, in the other direction. You're just like, warping there. You can warp there. You can warp your boat to you. You can warp to your boat, and they just, like, they they have no uh, shame about, war- like, we're a video game. Like, we're, this yeah. game is here in service of the player. The Animus yeah. has fast travel. Yeah, like, I can respect that, too. It's like Spider-Man was interesting because traveling in that game was so much fun that I felt, yeah. like, Good example. I, I felt stupid even using the subway. I mm-hmm. only did it when I was like in Brooklyn. I'm like, I have to get to Harlem because I <laughs> yeah. want to go get a collectible. Just like in real life. Yeah, just like in real life. I'm not going to swing there. Mm. <laughs> what do you think I am? Speaking of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, <clears throat> when I signed off last night to go to bed, I was at 77 hours. Ooh. And I know I still Wait. have several like story missions left. I feel like I spent too much time on side quests yeah. in that game. I filled up on chips before dinner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like ready to be done with it, but I still have like a big you, chunk of the story. So you still have you to finish wrap the story. It up pretty fast. Well, I mean, I, 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 yeah. I, my, when I'm looking at my like yeah. quest list, I still have st- several story missions. Mm-hmm. Part of it is that um, if you want to like upgrade, you know, your your character, you have to find all the cult of uh, yeah. the cultists. And there's like, well, you know, to un- you have to upgrade your spear in order to gain new abilities. Mm-hmm. And there's like, well, for the next upgrade, you have to like kill nine cultists. Yeah. And each one is very involved in like. Finding, that was my favorite finding part the clues. Of I you, like it too. It's you came like, at it kind of so sideways. Long. Like most people finish the storyline with your family first and mm-hmm. then hunt down the rest of the cultists and the other third main quest like that I don't your, want to spoil. Your top tier unlocks or ability upgrades are, are locked behind mm-hmm. upgrading your spear, which yeah. is locked behind killing cultists. And yeah. you want to have those before you finish. That just game. seemed like it'd be yeah. useful. But anyway, I think I'm going to go back to that game. Yeah? Yeah. It's a good video game. All right, let's moving on. Uh, let's moving on. Let's moving on. <laughs> this is Rob. He says, I live in a small town about four hours north of Vancouver in Canada. I'm emailing you guys as I need some you advice. You always read these like yeah. it's the clue on 20 questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's a very important detail. He wrote it. Okay. I didn't make this up. <clears throat> can he see his hands? <laughs> <laughs> Rob, can you see your hands? Let's moving on. I am emailing you guys as I need some advice on what games to play. I got out of gaming a few years back when I got into a relationship. During that time, I sold my PS4 and Xbox One. My partner was not into games, thought they were a waste of time. Oh, no. Your partner was a waste of time, Rob. (laughs) (laughs) We're married and have four kids. (laughs) Fast forward to now. We realize we do not work. And we are separating. I'm planning to buy a PS4 in the coming weeks. I need your guys' help as to what games you guys would suggest I play that I have missed in the last two and a half years. Let's see. We just mentioned them all. But that's just now. (laughs) Refer to last question. Breath of the Wild, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, (laughs) GTA V. By the way, (laughs) rebounding out of a failed relationship with video games is just fucking, that's perfect. What can go wrong? That is just the perfect way to go. That other Odyssey was good, too. Yeah. Well, he's, he's getting a PS4, not a Switch. Well, that's your first mistake. <laughs> I wasn't wild about Red Dead, but you clearly have to play Red Dead. See, I don't know. I don't know if I would recommend that. Mm. It's so like, like I think the Switch is so a divisive. better choice for singles. Look, he's getting a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> so what PS4 games from the last two and a half years? Well, if he's going to play alone. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne. I don't know if that's two and a half years. It's yeah, been a while. It's Just been play like four it. And a half. Play it. It's bleak and dark and challenging and fun, and you will uh, overcome obstacles, and it will remind you that even if you're depressed from your failed relationship, there are worlds out there that are grosser <laughs> and scarier and worse. Yeah. Or play something. Play some cartoon nonsense. Um, Cuphead 2. Yeah. Play something big. Cuphead's no. not on PS4. Okay. <laughs> Big goofy open world games where you're like super powered, Kingdom like Hearts. Spider-Man. Obviously, is Spider-Man is a good one. Like, that's a, that's a such a legit. thrilling, exhilarating, yeah. fun ass game, and you just whip around. You find backpacks and, well, and stuff. Gotta play God of War. No, uh, I'll yeah. play that game. No, you, he says. <clears throat> I forgot his last sentence. He said the last game I played was Titanfall Two. I am planning to play God of War already. So Why'd yeah. you say don't play God of War? I just think I'll make him sad. Oh, what? Oh, no, maybe. that's not a sad game. Well, it's not a sad game. I had a good there may cry be sad at parts, the end of it, but like the overall package is not a sad. Yeah. I had a good cry at the end of that game, but it was like a powerful. It was like a you know a, a, a warm cry. It was an affirming. I, I would say <laughs> a warrior's cry. <laughs> yeah. Play the witness. I think. Hmm. So that's a first-person puzzle game. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, Shadow of the Colossus remake. Shadow of the Colossus remake. It's a solid game. It's I would really skip uh, Trico, Last Guardian. Yeah. Mm. Dude, if you mm-hmm. do God of War and Spider-Man, and then like you know gravitate towards whatever your interests are, you are in 
good. You're in good shape. Horizon, yeah, great. Horizon Zero Dawn is a good pick. Mm-hmm. You know, Fortnite's popular. Fortnite is very popular. Yep. We gotta be That's getting, on PS4. Or yeah, Apex Legends. Apex Legends? Uh, we got to be getting close multiplayer. to Horizon 2, surely. Well, I Maybe. Think we talked about that recently because like, we don't... Uh, that was 2017, mm-hmm. yeah. um, what, a month before or a few days before the uh, Switch was released. Yeah. So yeah, no, nothing since then about what that team's up to. So yeah. I think that's a launch year PlayStation 5 game, and I think we'll find out about it next year. Mm. They'll be like, hey, here's what we're doing, and I, I'm sure it'll be another Horizon game. Yeah. Uh, other good uh, picks would be Resident Evil's 2 mm-hmm. remake and 7. Yeah. I think both of those are very good games. Or 4 in there, too. Yeah. It's 20 bucks. Classic. How about that? Persona 5. Mm-hmm. That one too. Gigantic Japanese RPG. If you start that now, you'll play it for two and a half. You'll just, years. Yeah, you'll play it for tens and tens, dozens of hours. What other RPGs? Final Fantasy 15. Does that was that in that window? Yeah, and that one's and it's gotten a gotten lot better. better. Gotten better. And then Dragon Quest 11 looks really good too. If you, I'm just saying, Dragon if you like Quest RPGs, yeah. those are some options. Dragon Quest Inquisition. For a more uh, Western RPG experience, I would recommend Divinity: Original Sin 2. Mm-hmm. An incredible RPG. Which is on PS4, which Justin usually is supportive of, but he's being strangely silent right now. Uh, I didn't love Divinity 2. Oh my gosh. I, here I, we I go. no, I don't say here we go. <laughs> the combat's very slow. Um, You're in combat like, a long, long time. Yeah, but I, I find the combat satisfying and there's lots of like elemental. Yeah. I really, I like all the with. RPG stuff, like in terms of act, like your ability to role play in that game yes. and have interesting dialogue choices. Like, I've never ever played a game that's effective or as good at that. Um, but then when I'm in combat, like, I wish combat just had a turbo, like, just run at triple the speed you're mm-hmm. at. That, like, that might be useful, actually, especially when you get deeper in the game. Uh, finally, Rob, I would recommend Dead Cells for oh, like, yeah. a faster pick up and play session and Super Hot. Super Hot. Which did come to PS4 in the last two and a half years. That's right. An amazing, very short and contained first person shooter. Uh, moving on to some news this week. Darkest Dungeon 2 was just announced yeah. yesterday. Did you see the... So PC Gamer had an interview with them that revealed yeah. some details. Yes. Um, sounds like it's going to be pretty different. Yes. Uh, Justin and I are probably the Darkest Dungeon boys on this panel. Have you guys, Sam, Brian? I'm aware of it. I'm, but you haven't played Darkest I think you would both like it. Yeah, looks I great. really want to. Um, <coughs> it's on every console. It's on iPad. It's on Switch. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's it's like very it's very difficult, right? It is very difficult. Um, and unforgiving. But they added they have the, an easier difficulty. They have an, an easier, shorter mode. The thing right? about that game, and I love that game, but it's awesome, 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 awesome. And then you kind of hit a wall at the end, and then you kind of like you don't really have much of a choice but to grind for like twelve or fifteen hours. Mm. And they rebalanced it to hopefully try to eliminate some of that and allow you to just sort of. It's still very hard. It's it's a misnomer to call it an easy mode, but it just sort of smooths out the ramp of like getting through the end <clears> of the game. It's great. A big pitfall is that so like you're like. You're building up a, a team of adventurers and trying to conquer the, the darkest dungeon in your hometown. A big pitfall that people run into is that you you, you lose. <laughs> you level up just like a few characters that are your most powerful, and then on a run, they could all be wiped out. Mm-hmm. And then you're left with a bunch of low-level characters Scrubs. That, that can't do anything in these high-level dungeons. Can you just research. reset your console before it saves? Uh, I don't know. I, don't I, think, I think, so. think it's too smart. For, too smart. <laughs> I think it's auto saving all the time. So yeah, on the back of the PS4, click. You that's really the mistake. Because like, everyone's like, I'm doing great, and they go into the darkest dungeon and get yeah. wiped out, and then they don't. The, the mistake is that people don't have like a B team. Yeah, that's like you kind of you kind of have to have an A, B, and C team. Yeah. I think to really play that game well. Uh, but anyway, Darkest Dungeon Two is announced. It's the same combat system, um, but the, they say it has a completely different meta game structure. You're going on a journey now, so yeah. you're sort of like it sounds like. I think it's going to be like FTL. I think it it's going to be like a random I was run. If it was going to be like that. That's funny. Hmm. They they haven't announced yet, but I think in the in the original game, you're going into a dungeon over and over and over again, and like trying to clear out this estate. And I think this time, you know, you're you're going over like a mountain pass, right? So I think it's going to be different each time. Yeah, it's cool. Do you think there'll be action elements? at all, or is it all going to be I mean, turn-based? You know, they say the combat system will return. Yeah. So it's turn-based, it's or is it real It is turn-based, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, they say, we're giving players a glimpse of the supernatural apocalypse, twisting and distorting the world beyond the estate Oof. of the original Darkest Dungeon. Uh, they say, they're, you know, Red Hook Studios is a the developer. They've grown to 14 people. They have plans to add another six or so in the coming 18 months. Big. Which tells me the, the, this game is maybe a, wise a, out. a ways out. <laughs> it also indicates... Mm. I love that they're like developing the lore of this like game world. Well, yeah. The lore hound in me really yeah. appreciates that. The lore um, hound. Like where are they journeying to? Like that almost implies that like way down the road there'll be a third one, right? Like well, yeah, they're building up to something. They also say the sequel is still very appropriate for an early access type approach. So mm-hmm. 
uh, I think the first, the original Darkest Dungeon was out in early access maybe like six months or so before it officially launched. Buy it, play it. It's on every platform. Yeah. Very, very cool. Looking forward to that. We have an email here from Scott Sinkowski. Uh, b- big fan. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Former, <laughs> former IGNer Scott Sinkowski. I think I only met Sin once. Currently at Apple. Mm-hmm. Good uh, dude right there. It says, uh, Dear Fuzz at the Omega Precinct. After the news hit recently of the 9.4 WADA graded copy of Super Mario Mm Bros. selling for $100,000, I wanted to get your thoughts on graded video games. Sam, you want to fill everyone in in case they aren't caught up on this? Uh, A a couple of collectors uh, conspired to purchase a very high valued uh, copy of Super Mario Brothers. It's it's sealed, but it doesn't have shrink wrap. It has a sticker on it. That means that it came out in the very early launch window of the NES. But it's also, you know, unbroken and in very good condition. So it was high rated. I think it was given a nine point seven by a rating company. There, there's uh, similar to comics. You can send your game out, pay a fee, get your game rated. Um, and so the fact that it was uh, from a rare pressing. Uh, early pressing, and that it was high graded meant that uh, people think that one day it will be worth even more than it is now. Hmm. So a bunch of people kind of bought it as an investment. They paid $100,000 for it. It was not auctioned. This just was purchased. So a bunch of people chipped in on this? Yeah, like oh, interesting. Was six collectors that uh, pitched in. And their idea and the, the comparison that everybody's making and that I might have originated with Frank Cifaldi uh, was uh, uh, that uh, it's got, like Action Comics number one. So uh, that's the first issue with Superman, you know, first appearance of Superman. That, that matters, right? It's culturally relevant. Uh, like Super Mario Brothers, unlike games like Stadium Events, which is you know equally or, or just just under that value, which doesn't really have cultural significance. It's for completists mm-hmm. to complete like a collection of original NES games. And so they're thinking that like there's going to be like this kind of rubber banding for a little bit, and then like Super Mario Brothers early pressing in perfect condition will be the most valuable video game imaginable. Right, because at the end of the day, people care about Super Mario more than exactly. stadium, stadium events. events? Or and that's a bold statement. <laughs> and, and, and they care about early pressings. Yep. And they care about, uh, so in this case, Action Comics is really important here because there's no really great surviving uh, uh, pressings of that. It's like you get graded, but you're never going to get one to be like, wow, this was hermetically sealed at the time. It right. just didn't happen. And so like, we're very lucky to even have a Super Mario Brothers in this good condition. Well, so it's I'm really into Star Wars toys, and like, there's that first run of Kenner Star Wars toys from the late 70s that, same deal as the old comics and old video games, nobody was like, this is going to be worth something someday. I'm going to seal this in this box, or I'm going to polybag this comic. I'm going to put this you know, carded Kenner figure unpunched in a, in a cube mm-hmm. and store it through all of time. Like You opened video games. You opened mm-hmm. comics. Like, you you put you put action figures like in the bathtub and on and your bicycle spokes and stuff like that. Yep. It bought to be used. Yeah, yeah records exactly. are the same way. And now we live in a collector culture in which we're aware, aware of that. Yes, and that, right. and so you buy something and you might buy two of them and not open the other ones. So if that all started with comics and but like, whatever know, is rare and expensive in thirty years will be something that it didn't even cross anyone's mind. Exactly, be, it's not it'll be like Beanie Babies and it's not going to be Amiibo. It'll be like an iPhone or like yep. you know something we've, weird. We've rac- actually already started seeing that, and you can back me up Early on this with iPods. with uh, with video games recently where it's it's not necessarily the ones you expect. Yeah, I mean like the I saw boxed versions of the. Wii U, like the Wind Waker edition, are going for like 800 bucks right now. And that's only going to go up because Nintendo stopped making them. Mm-hmm. And a it's couple of years ago, you were like, oh, what is this junk? You know, not me. I, I enjoy if people had moved on from the Wii U, yeah. so it was a low pressing and like stuff like that. That's a, Wii U and Wii are really going to be collectible systems because yep. they have a bunch of shovelware. Yep. And the shovelware will inevitably have significance and for completionists. It's very hard to get a complete Wii collection. Because it had, yeah, because certain games had low. I remember um, so I. Much, so much shovelware. Yeah. Shovelware, yeah. <laughs> I was buying. That's I was what, shovelware on NES is like the most valuable stuff sometimes. At some point, Rise of Dinosaur Peak, the Flintstones game. I, yeah, that's shovelware. right. That's that's another one that Mario. I I think I, I'll boldly say it topples <laughs> in the cultural zeitgeist. Um, but I was at one point trying to get like a full complete set of GameCube games um, oh. and uh, North America, mm-hmm. and I realized that I believe it was Gauntlet Legacy or something like that. Gauntlet Legends, Legends or one of those um, was those. one of the more rare games because they just didn't print a bunch of copies. And I think and I mid- played that on GameCube. Yeah, and it's totally fun, but it's like 64. it wasn't really worth like you know quadruple the value at the time. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of things like that just 
just keep going up, and it's never yeah. the ones you expect. What yeah. are you doing with those GameCube games now? They are in a uh, like a CD spindle with. I got rid of all the boxes and manuals and everything, and they're, uh, they're sitting in a drawer in my house. Uh, oh, that hurts my heart. I don't know what to do with them. You want them? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, uh, with the boxes and manuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are all gone. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting because it's like I think now we've we've boomeranged into this weird hoarder culture where people are like they save boxes for everything and they keep everything packaged and they keep action figures on the on the card backs and everything like that and it's all at the off chance that it might be worth something someday and because we're all doing it at the same time and you're being marketed to like it will be yes well I remember even the um the it's a waste of time and space you mentioned like the action comic Superman thing when Superman died spoilers in the 90s they had the death of Superman comic and it was sealed in a black in a black turned bag. out he was the one with sunglasses yeah exactly and he came back like five times as five different krypton aliens or whatever there was one of them was a robot um, i think it was weird but every kid i knew bought uh like three copies of that and one was to keep in the bag yeah. and one was to uh open and read and one was to like store in a closet forever because 30 years yeah, from now that's it exactly work. what happened at the time also the breaking of the batman issue yep. Where Batman's back was broken. Where Bane broke his back, yeah. It was right at the time in which you could buy extra copies. And you go to the comic book store, they might be sold out. Yeah. So totally, though, it had, you know, 100,000 copies pressed versus, like, what would have been at the time, 30,000. Yeah, so it's yeah. Like, you know, because people went to the store to buy them when they didn't usually mm -hmm. buy them and stuff. It's all gimmicky. It has much more to do with how many copies exist. Yeah. Than anything else, mm -hmm. and at that time, the things that were worth money, the more recent comics that were worth money, were things like the first appearance of Wolverine or the first issues of uh, Spawn. of Spawn with Todd McFarlane and, uh, uh, or sorry, the first issues of Spider Man with Venom in them that Todd yeah. McFarlane was doing and stuff. Right, like those became worth money, but people didn't really like Spider Man when the or the Hulk when Wolverine appeared in that. Th those happened to be kind of unpopular at the time. Mm -hmm. So then they had low print runs, and then nobody, and then when those characters exploded, they were, you know. There's also weird it's stuff. Oh, like, that. It's not I the saw, thing you expect. I saw, and Seth, I think Seth Macy from IGN was tweeting about this recently, but uh, there's like a basketball card from the 90s where sitting courtside are the Menendez brothers, like two Ooh. days after they killed their parents because wow. they took all this money and they're like, let's go to the. Let's go to the basketball they got game. Caught in a basketball. Yeah, program. and they're caught. They're caught in the back of a basketball card, and uh, that just became this weird collector's thing. Like mm -hmm. if people latch onto things that you wouldn't expect. So. Yep. What was the question? Getting back to Scott's <laughs> question, he says, "I personally dabble in the graded comic book market as a fun way to invest money into something I love and am culturally interested in. The movement seems fairly new to games, and much of the gripes I see online are the same complaints people had in the '90s over slabbed comics. For instance, you can't read the comic or play the game; mm. you can only enjoy the cover. Because after they seal it, yeah. they put it in this like you know lucite case, and then mm. you don't take it out. A slab. One thing going for comics is that accessibility is the accessibility to archived content is widely available via trade paperbacks or digital. Obviously, for games, this is a bigger issue with so many games currently unplayable to the general public. Mm. One final note, for comics and sports cards, they're really just preserving paper by comparison. Some games have built-in batteries or other potentially toxic substances that may continue to deteriorate, deteriorate over time despite being entombed. Keep up the great work. I listen every week. Not mm. a question, Missy Scott. Guys. That wasn't a question, but yeah, just sort it's of really comes. interesting. He did spark a very long discussion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amongst us. I opened us, up a. Uh, I was uh, helping somebody fix a pinball machine this weekend, and I opened it up, and the the there's three AA batteries in it. This is really common in those games, uh, and you, they were leaking acid. Yep. And the acid follows this like trace of uh, the the components in the computer, which is like this was a Sega machine, really expensive to replace the board, and like to clean it up is like really hard to do, and like it was ruined basically, hmm. uh, and game. Games with batteries in them. I thought that was a really good point that he made. That mm -hmm. uh, Zelda, you know, that's not a rare game or anything, but like that battery will eventually leak and could really hurt your game. I, maybe I have to see how it's mounted in there. I mean, maybe I it needs to be. That. Maybe they need to be, you know, entombed and preserved in a different way, like different methods than mm -hmm. what we do for comic books. Well, I think it's like if a battery dies inside of a game, you would never know unless you unseal it, and by unsealing it, yeah. you devalue it. Yeah, it's like uh, Schrodinger's like video game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the cat, and it's like, can you see? Is that game ever going to be played? Does it matter if it's playable? Is the game, people like, do pop open games when yeah. they're selling expensive ones that aren't graded, and they show you yeah. the uh, yeah. the, the you, board. Yeah. Make, make like, you're list. never, ever going to play it. So how do you even know what's in it? Yeah, and then graded things, like we're talking about sealed. True. They're already sealed. They're sealed games. Yeah. So yep. it's like, 
This, the, you know, the flip side is uh, video games are software, right? So it's like the preservation of like a physical good, like that comic book that's sealed away. That's the whole experience. Like you flip through those pages and read the comic, whereas the video game experience lives in like the lines of code, like it's digital, mm-hmm. right? So it's like this physical artifact of what's actually like a digital experience that can still be had, like you can still download and play he's right that game preservation is a concern, yeah. but, um, that sticker on the $100,000, uh, Super Mario Brothers copy is worth a hundred thousand dollars or it's, it's worth it's $900,000. Really, yeah. Or it's really $90, the, yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> the rest of it's not. And the thing is like, you can read the PDF of that comic yeah. and you can play the ROM of that game. But, um, at some point someone's going to find something that's so rare that isn't backed up. And I think like you mentioned, Frank Zafali, that's what those guys are really into. Oh yeah. It's finding weird old games that, uh, never got localized or released or finished. Um, and it's all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, like putting them back together. Don't, like, there's all kinds of evidence that, like, on the eShop and Virtual Console, that companies are downloading and selling you back ROMs that were just yeah. downloaded off the internet. Yeah, and even pulling uh, like sprite sprite sheets off of like Deviant Art and, yep. and publishing them as their own, and you can see watermarks in them and stuff like that. It's really weird. And you and I have talked about um, like what happens with mobile games. Like, yeah, they're you all know, lost. like they're they all, all go away, and then you have to basically like if I want to play Resident Evil Four on iPhone, um, I have to. Get an iPhone from like three or four years ago and like not update it basically. The example I always come back to is John Romero made, you know, sort of crappy mobile games for a while for old flip phones. And the games aren't good. They're not amazing. But like this is one of the most important like video game yep. creators of all time. Like you know, he was way ahead of the curve on that too. He yep. was doing that in like yeah. the 90s. And so it's like there's cultural significance there that, as far as I know, is just gone. Like you wouldn't want to lose. But that's like the collector thing. That at some point, people will be mining that archive of like they'll buy a bunch of old handsets, buy a bunch of old iPhones, and like see what's on them because you yeah. can't get the code. Anymore. I mean, Bioshock came to iOS and then they <laughs> updated so iOS and they it's stopped gone. selling the game and now it's gone. But somewhere on someone's phone who they refuse to update it is is a playable version of that classic game. Stuff and like Infinity Blade from the main makers of Fortnite, which is right. one of the biggest games on earth, and this is what they were up to before that. I scrambled and downloaded like that trilogy because I had them purchased already, but um, they will not update that that series yeah. with the new versions of iOS. So if you know they come out with a new version of iOS tomorrow, that patches those games out, and they're just gone forever. Yeah, I have an old iPad that has a bunch of stuff like that on it that I just keep. I'm not going to update the OS on it. Like It just has. I dig that. <clears throat> I once flushed a G.I. Joe down the toilet. And I filmed it with my dad's camcorder. All right. I so Did hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, he went down. I don't remember which G.I. Joe it was, though. Yeah. I hoped really well, hard that that sentence out. just ended with the word toilet. Go into the sewer. Sewer under your house. <laughs> I'm sure it's lodged somewhere in there. Uh, one more email. This is from Piyush. And he says, Sam, mm-hmm. I also hate ice cream. So you are not alone in this world. Did I say hate? I he, think this is just what Piyush is saying. Because I meant it. <laughs> really? You hate it? Yeah, I really don't like it. Uh, what's your? Is it because it's cold or you? Yeah. Like, nah, I don't like the. I don't like sweet stuff. But also, it's really messy. It like, is definitely messy. I, I've been in situations where it's like, man, I hate ice cream. It's so messy. Don't please don't don't bring that in the car <laughs> to a friend or my wife or whatever. And then all of a sudden, there's just ice cream on the on the ceiling, <laughs> the car the roof, of the car. Common problem we all yeah. face. Yeah. Or like little kids when they have ice it. It's like the, the napkins like matted onto it, and then there's just ice cream all down their yeah. arm. Little kids are just gross disgusting. in general. That I was going to say, there's yeah. a little kid's hands are just sticky all the time. It's no matter disgusting. What you do. Yeah. Can't be helped. Don't just carry yeah. wet wipes with you everywhere. Be. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. And if you Oops. remember way back, what's that? I said, noise. Remember, way back to our first email this episode from Michael Charbonneau in Bar, Vermont. Mm -hmm. He also provides our video game 20 questions suggestion this week. We're giving him another chance? Yeah. Uh, He should tell us what his stats are next time, because I want to know before we go in. We're we're doing repeat 20 questions. Say, I've stumped them (laughs) twice. Can you answer my third riddle? (laughs) I want stuff like that. Let the questioning begin. Do you eat or drink food or or stuff in this game? Yes. Whoa, that's a good. I, this, I, I like that. Thanks. Thanks. Really nice one. Uh, can you see your hands in this game? Yes. Oh man, it's not Pac-Man. Yeah, I was trying to think. Pac-Man yeah, that's one of hands. the only ones where you can eat food and not see your hands. <laughs> Nailed it. Did, did this come out uh, after 1990? No. Oh. Yes. Uh, is this a role-playing game? No. Well, there's only like four of those before 1990. <laughs> so we got rid of those. Not a role-playing game. 
Uh, what what games do you see your hands and eat food? And uh, it's got to be a power up. Um, Castlevania, Final yeah. Fight, you eat food. <laughs> yep. Uh, Castlevania, yeah, you eat the the, the wall chickens. Um, <laughs> this first appearance an arcade game? No. Cool. Super Mario That's technically five. eats. Yeah. Is he technically eating? Yeah, hundred percent. You never see him go. Oh, that was a really good. He's technically there's... murdering because he murders every single brick, which is actually the inhabitants yeah. of the Mushroom Kingdom. Turned yeah, into. he's freeing. That's bleak. He's uh no. The, I souls. think the implication <laughs> is he's eating that mushroom. He's eating the the little toad the boys. No, the children. No, <laughs> Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom children. He's eating. What about in Mario 2? Does he ever eat a vegetable or does he just throw them? He just throws them. Yeah, he doesn't like them. Wart eats those vegetables. Wart eats them, yeah. What happens to The vegetables hurt him. He doesn't eat them. (laughs) You throw them in his mouth and he dies. Do frogs eat vegetables? Why are they even in his bedroom? (laughs) Yeah, that was a question. Is he a toad? I have a lot of questions anyway. (laughs) Um, Is the... Oh, man. Is it a a brawler? Is it a 2D side-scrolling brawler? No. Oh, okay. So, well... Did this game appear on the NES? Yes. So an NES made for NES game. So it's it's not it's not um well you don't eat in Double Dragon right? It's not River City Ransom. It's that's not a sure. brawler. You yeah. eat in Double. It's not River a City Ransom. Yeah, barf. but it's not. But that's a brawler. You barf in River City Ransom. You do. You, you don't barf. You points, say everybody. barf. Yeah. Yeah. You no, say barf. they they say barf. <laughs> oh, yeah. Barf. Everyone throws up in that game, but you. <laughs> do you think they're just saying barf? I think. No, so. I think they're. Is this puking. game based on a license? Based on a license? No. It's not Gremlins 2, the new class. Yeah, that, was, that was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> so it's, uh, well, it's not the new class, it's the new batch. <laughs> <laughs> the new class. The new you class. have Saved by the Bell. Gremlins, <laughs> the next generation. Although, students, please sit you're, down. <laughs> you're also not supposed to feed the students of Saved by the Bell after midnight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're right, it is. And the then new someone batch. did, and that's what happened to that show. Uh, is this a Japanese game? No. Ooh. An American. NES game. Mm-hmm. It's not a brawler where you not see licensed. your hands and eat. Is it a is it a platformer? No. God. Oh, what the That's f- 10. Oh man. This is an NES game, right? For sure. We know that. Mm-hmm. And you know you eaten it. Um, Kirby, right? That blob eats in a boy in his blob. It's not Kirby? a Japanese game. Oh, right. And it's not licensed. I feel like all the Western made games were based on a license back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are the American made? NES games. There's a lot. Are there? Yeah, it's all shovelware. But they're not platformers no, or brawlers. Batman? Or was this game positively received? Yes. Yeah, people love this game. <laughs> um, just thinking about Bubble Bobble is Japanese as hell, so it's definitely not that. You eat like crazy in that game, but you also don't see the hands. It would be nice to get a genre or like a uh, company. Mm-hmm. It's well, not, no, American companies aren't really around anymore. How many so NES we, we games know are not RPGs, platformers, or brawlers? Yeah, what, 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 what does that leave? Point and click adventures? Mm-hmm. Maniac Mansion? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You eat that game, right? Yeah, maybe. Was this game also on PC? Yes. I feel like I'm right there. Yeah. I think We've I have Maniac it. Mansion before, but really? that, is, that doesn't preclude us from having it again. I mean, do we ask if it's an adventure game? I mean, there's also games like Pirates and Who Framed Roger Yule Rabbit and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> Oof. Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's a Japanese game, I think. That's sort of a brawler sometimes, yeah. right? I mean, I people know. beat the hell out of you. <laughs> what were you going to ask? I was just going to ask if it was an adventure game, point and click adventure game. Right. Dick Tracy. Is, is it a point and click adventure game? Yes. Ah. Uh, I feel like it's Maniac Mansion. <laughs> Can you destroy a hamster in a microwave? Yes. Maniac oh, Mansion. Boy. It is Maniac yes! Mansion. Yes. <clears throat> oh, man. Nicely job. We did it. I don't <laughs> Nicely job. I don't I remember. Think we how. had it before and we didn't get it. I don't remember having it so, before. Like, I don't remember. Maybe it was from him. We That's, might have had. <laughs> I, we might, Can you guess it a second a t- time? That was a tough one. And then we don't. It might have been Day of the Tentacle before. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. Maybe, yeah. Um, would you have picked Day of the Tentacle, though? I don't know if you would have picked the Day of the Tentacle. Is that an NES game? Day of the Tentacle, not. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, I was going to say. Action, yeah. Um, I Dude. was worried you were going to get stuck on Made for NES. Oh, right. No, no, I, right, right. I, I had yeah. been presuming there was also PC games. I, yeah. w- I was not at all, so I'm glad you guys saved that. Bitmap That's Books funny. has a coffee table book of the art of point-and-click adventure games mm. that just has full-page spreads of that like gorgeous pixel art from That's exactly that era. Awesome. I just got my copy last night, flipped wow. through it a little bit. Oh, nice. Man, it is gorgeous. Yeah. I haven't, like, it's also filled with words. <laughs> what's that? What's it's it's screen oh, wait a minute, this book is yeah. filled with words? The only point I'm making like is that I, I have, <laughs> all I've done is flip through it, and it passes the test of just being gorgeous what's and sturdy. What's it called? Uh, the Art of Point and Click Adventure. Sweet. So yeah, go look that I up. can't vouch for, like, you know, like, I'll read through it and be like, is this book, you know, a really legitimate cultural artifact or not? But um, it is really, really gorgeous and full of great art. 
um, the NES port may have been handled by a Japanese studio. I'm not sure. Enough. But the game is obviously developed. So we won twice. Right. Ron Gilbert. Yeah, we only right. have to we only have to call on the referees if we get it yeah. if we don't make that's it. If we don't get it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, thank you for the suggestion, Michael Charbonneau. That's about all the scoops we have for you this week. Sorry we have a bit of a truncated episode. Uh, we're very busy schedule in the uh, IGN studio here this week. Is anyone going to play Anthem this weekend? Yeah. You are going to play it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is it out this weekend no. on Friday? It's on everything. For everything? Yeah. Okay. I don't, no, I pull up the chart. Yeah, the, how, I am the it's fourth release date, I believe. Yeah. Still playing Trails in the Sky. Trails in the Sky for you. There's been a coup, ke- a coup attempt. Oh, my goodness. So I'm trying to reach the queen and get word to Queen Alicia right now. Sweet. Oh, my gosh. We played Tetris 99. That's a spoiler, we, by the way. Tetris 99 <laughs> is super fun. That's It's a really good game. Yeah. And I also found Incredibly out that there's some people experience. in the office that are really good at Tetris in the new way where you can do tricks that you couldn't before. I didn't even know. about those. It's, it's all about those T-spins, man. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. They're powered by the T-virus. That's true. <laughs> Uh, Brian, I haven't seen you online on your PS4 since uh, Far Cry New Dawn. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I got to get back out there. Uh, I think I'm going to go do some more campaigns in Resident Evil 2, which I really enjoy. Oh, cool. Yeah. They're Uh, just uh, the new new DLC is really fun. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, cool. Uh, And I will attempt to finish Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Good work. We'll see. All right. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Dan, in the studio. Let's moving on, everybody. (laughs) Let's moving on. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop. And we're out. (laughs) 